Okay, so we've covered previous perspectives on the game, such as the gaming journalists. We've also covered some uh, Metacritic scores here and there. We're actually about to show you, so right in the video, you'll be able to see some image setups, some imagery under bitmap, and you'll be able to see some review scores and read into the text. If it's not large and to your liking, I apologize. You can just go onto the website and read it for yourselves. Some are quick and not are quick to dismiss the game based on a few first few levels while others and most of it are made up of people who have thoroughly played the game and don't like what they see the thing is people hold devil may cry to a standard if it's not hideki kamiya's first game it's devil may cry 3 whether it be special edition in that regard or the original i the point is i'm playing both of those iterations and i'm not happy with the fact that the standard has changed now it's just dmc and a game to bridge i don't even know if it bridges casual gaming to a hardcore game I, I've already played the first level with my friend X-Squad here, and I'm disappointed already. I found it actually quite lackluster in a bit. Yeah, I mean, the game has changed because of the fact that you no longer have lock-on. It's like, without it, the game changes... It, the experience becomes terrible, it becomes dull, it becomes repulsive because of the movement. It's like in a fighting game where you're both players and you're in the middle of the screen, like in Marvel, Ultimate Marvel, like what happens if you move a little bit far left and you put a, a Hadouken command, something else will come out. Like if you're just on the tip. With the stinger the way it is, Dante will auto-aim based on where the monster on the boss, the hunter, moves and the camera will follow suit. But in certain cases, he'll miss completely. And that's the problem with it. I mean, that's just one thing, but it's it's just one thing. It's detrimental to the way the game plays, and I'm not happy with it. They should have just kept the lock on. It was a poor design de decision to remove it. The demo kind of got away with it because I got to deal with multiple enemies at a time, and I got to move around locations. Right here, I'm just not content with what I'm seeing, and we've just played it. We're going to replay it again. We just need to grab some orbs. All you have to do is grab your basic move sets. Like, this doesn't really require that many replays. For me, it w even with my veteranism of playing the original Devil May Cry's 1 through 4, it feels like like the transition is very weird, very, very difficult to explain. It's just, it, it's a it mismatch. It doesn't feel it's a like, it's like it's Devil May Cry 4. The gameplay alone feels quite shallow than it should be. It's not deep, you don't have that many combos as you used to. You even with the combos you do have, just because of the fact with the lock on camera and it's only at certain enemies you can't get close to them or you have to need a certain weapon to get to them right now, it it's made of that you just can't even fight them anymore. I tried dodging. I tried dodging near the corner. It, it was slightly unresponsive. I don't know why because I was on the wall and I wasn't all the way at the oh, end. And you can't evade in, and the air evasion really doesn't work. How so? Virtually, you and me both, when we, when we both played the first level, back to back, I, every single time I tried to do evasion in the air, I always got hit, and every so often, even though you pulled it off sometimes, half the time you end up getting hit, because it didn't really want to respond. Yeah, not only that, but when I tried to parry the enemy's attacks, I was trying to channel split-second royal guards. It really doesn't come into play here. In fact, you could just wildly swing your sword toward the projectile, and slightly, depending on the timing, you can actually hit it, and it will trigger a scripted cutscene. And also, I want to mention, scripted cutscenes have no place in a game of this genre. If it's been done before on PlayStation 2, let me know. But, sir, but you, could a you could then tell me that it has and then I could ask you why is it still being done in this generation you can't keep up your style meter because the game interrupts you to trigger a small cutscene that you can't skip to watch the hunter move around that's not what I want to do Devil May Cry 4 did not have this predominantly I fought Kratos I fought Virile um, Dagon the Toad the Hell Boss uh, the Plant Woman Devil May Cry 3 you you want to know where there's like fewer uh, scripted cutscenes the Agni Rudra battle where you fight them both, you defeat one, optionally, and then he will power up by using both swords. That's the only time I have ever seen a scripted cutscene, and it's one of the few, at least, in the entire series. And all the other cutscenes are tailored to the very beginning or the very end. Nothing in between. Really. That's exactly. just it. Exactly. That doesn't make the game more challenging for you because you have to work up your style meter due to the drain of it during the, the scripted only... cutscene. It means that you have something on the scale on par with the limitation to play this game. The only way I could say this would actually work is if they do what like they did in God of War. They make it an action sequence 
instead. Like if Kratos is killing people, they're supposed to die anyway, or by the enemy's hand, and it's it's mixed into the gameplay anyway. You can yeah, kill them, or, or they you kill. actually you change the way you kill them. You make it more brutalic, or and that actually adds to your combo meter. Not this, that is just a simple move, and then basically you knock them back, and you do whatever it's gonna, the effect is gonna do, and then suddenly, oh, you can't really do anything because all you have to, you can use e ebony and ivory to shoot them, and that's it. One and thing to keep close distance. Yeah, one thing I'd like to address is the pairing, and I know we haven't played the full game, but it feels a little bit different, probably because of its level-based environment, where you're not cornered, but you're in a wide area trying to fight a boss. This was not the case with Poison, in which you had to cross multiple platforms. Here, the hunter-boss fight, it's a little bit easier for me to parry, but again, if I wildly swing my sword, and you cannot do Helmbreaker, it does not contribute. Who knows, maybe on a higher difficulty level, it just might. We're at the highest difficulty level so far, at yeah. Nephilim. We're playing, we're playing Nephilim. And that's how it is. He beat it, as you can see on the screen, in less than 15 minutes. I beat it in 20. The thing that we want to disclaim is that X-Squad here has, has kind of rusted between games since he doesn't frequently play The Devil May Cry once. I am the hardcore fan, he's the sort of casual, so this will kind of bridge our, our, yeah, our I'm, topic. I'm, I'm busy with other games in the process, so my skills have been a little bit rusty. But I do know, and I've watched all the videos about Devil May Cry, and this, so far, as I see, has not really been close to Devil May Cry standards. Uh, in fact, if you guys disagree with us, we just want you to know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Like, whether I'm outraged or just, or okay, I'm passive about a particular instance. You're entitled to feel the way you do, and no one can take that away from you, from me, not e like, not even, uh, not even just people in general who want to play games. If you want to play a game, play it. Have fun, alright? We're at least going to try, and not only that, so before you go on to call me a whiner, to call me a complainer, note that I don't actually have to play this game. Even though this is my friend's copy, I'm giving my time to it. In fact, I've contributed a moves list using Microsoft Word and Excel so that I don't have to frequently pause during the game, alright? If I've gone out of my way to take notice of the game, like, even if it doesn't sound like a lot, you know, I could just not even play it at all. And yet here I am. Heck, this game has really really put the standard level at pretty low. We're at the hardest level so far, Nephilim, and as you could say, it feels like I'm playing on easy mode, almost. That's how bad it is. At that time, I wouldn't blame you. They, they did say that they were trying to make this casual friendly or trying to casual bridge Casual friendly is one thing. I, I know you can make it more close to harder mode, uh, the, the Nephilim mode, it's more like a normal mode, but all, going as far to make it almost easy, that's what you're saying is, if we play this on easy mode, what would it be, one hit kills? That's what got, that's got me questioning. Alright, now let's go, let's go and investigate this little article that I found on VG247.com. You see, I, I mentioned VG beforehand, I have with small details, but I did not explain enough of what they did. They have a long-ass blog post about how DMC Devil May Cry, quote-unquote, FANS are a crying shame. In fact, I'm going to read it to you, and we're going to pick this thing apart. We're going to read to you what the media thinks of the audience. You know, the ones putting their money into this game, because they get free copies on hand, while the rest of us have to work, pay off loans, pay bills, borrow copies. It's a tight economy, and like I said, the price is bullshit, right? It just seems to me like they have it set up that way, because they could trick lots of people into thinking it's alright. And, literally, if this game tanks, and we're pretty much gonna probably play it to the end today, it, it's just gonna show that if it tanks, Literally be expecting by tomorrow, it's gonna go down at least 20 bucks. In fact, I would like it to, because I'm not purchasing this game new. I would never give my money or dignity over to Capcom. I don't care if I have that many games. I would rather have my self-esteem and my dignity the way it is, alright? I'm not giving myself over to a corporation, neither should any be anybody be. Yeah. Okay, so let's go through one sentence at a time. There's a stereotype that gamers are all pathetic misanthropes with the social grace of public lice, pre-endangered species status, and adjustment disorders so pronounced that they are visible from the moon. This isn't true, though. Gamers as a body don't exist. 
The people who play games are just people playing games and that arbitrary grouping is becoming even more diverse as gamification creeps into every aspect of our lives. It will soon be impossible to microwave a TV dinner without scoring points, updating your Facebook, killing off a boss, and unlocking an uber-epic 5,000-point armor set. Ugh, <sighs> all in one breath. Oof. Anyway, we all occasionally subscribe to the myth that gamers are a thing. It's easy to do when you hang around sites like VG247. You start believing that this relatively tiny group of people who you know and care about video games with an unusual level of passion are a solid, cohesive unit. You read the comments and you draw conclusions about what kind of people these quote-unquote GAMERS are. It's not a very nice kind. Like all comment threads and forums everywhere, gaming websites and, and yeah, tend to be dominated by vocal minorities keen to expose a... expose their insanity and ignorance. According to this measure, the gamer, quote unquote, is kind of sexist, racist, homophobic, reactionary, unable to spell, almost exclusively male, hasn't read a book since the spot run, probably dramatically under-equipped in the general department. Genital department, I'm sorry. Incapable of basic self-care like hygiene, cooking, and housework, and covered in Cheeto dust. All right, I'm extrapolating a, a little here. But that's the mental picture I keep coming up with in between rolling my eyes so hard my skull shakes whenever I read some embarrassing comment about how Dante's hair color means DMC Devil May Cry isn't a solid, excellent game, well worth your time. Mind you, these people are also posting up the Easter egg of Dante's classic look through that stupid white wig in that one possibly unskippable cutscene. Uh, moving on. Here's a bridge, now get over it. Look, kids. The verdict is in. DMC is a lot of fun, as it should be. It was built in close consultation. Consolation. Consolation. I'm sorry. With a team of action experts at Capcom who oversaw the rest of the most, much praised series. Sure, Kamiya was not on board, but Kamiya is just one man. Newsflash. Games are made by dozens, if not hundreds, of people. When celebrity individuals depart, companies like Capcom don't lose ground. The teams that stay behind have all the knowledge and expertise they use to build the games that they are almost never given any credit for. A single amateur like makes a better headline, see? I'd like to pause you on that point. The problem is, yes, there's people who know how to do it right, know how to, and there are people who left who did work on the project, but there's one simple fact that they're not pointing out. With that certain visual individual that did leave, left the original story, the original envisionment, and the actual literally the imaginative mind that created that entire universe and character. Look at Resident Evil with Shinji Mikami. He wasn't around for six and Capcom bragged about having 600 people working on this game and look at how it turned out. Really kind of lackluster that game a little. I like the new addition of enemies but really the stories were, were not that good. And I was completely outraged by the fact that they introduce they, the action element to the game again and what should be survival horror? The in certain aspects it did work, in certain aspects not even shouldn't be applied. But also because of Ada Wong's app update, which I have not played the game ever since when they brought that out. The fact that you have to work hard for something and yet Capcom easily yeah. would decide to patch it for free and give it to you. Yes, which I found very annoying and very, very like, basically, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Something I that you have to work for in previous gaming generations that they just unlock for you for free. Hell, usually... And it's not worth it because, and in, in for a fact, people could just automatically unlock that if they actually did the effort. Okay, but here's my problem, though. Take this game, for example. What is it missing? Virgil's Downfall. Admit it. It should be in the fucking game. Alright, especially if you want to put... If you want to advertise something. It should be a selling point. The only thing that I can say that this game took from Western lore was the exploitation of Catwoman as an advertisement, saving her as DLC. I, like, advertising it early on but to get it out in the stores and to get people hyped, only to find out that it's not going to come on there upon the initial purchase. Yes. Turns out that Virgil's downfall is all the way in February. Yeah, it turns out a month from now, people will be able to use their codes to, get, to receive him. I don't know if Capcom went with the on-disc DLC again, but Virgil is not in the game as far as we can tell. And my friend here paid for his copy, and it's not there. That's the problem with these things. That's the flaw in them. I, I honestly, I can't, I, I can't comprehend this, why this would be good for the business, but at the expense of the consumer. That's the problem with these things. I may... 
in fact, the whole game rating system needs to change because now we're receiving games without everything. Games need to be judged based on their content and what the originality that they can provide. You're saying that it's excusable not to have Bloody Palace until after the launch date. It's excusable not to have Virgil until much after the launch date. You can't... It, I don't even want to list it. People should already know that this crap is happening. I feel like I'm raising Virgil's awareness. Virgil's downfall should have been a part of the game because Virgil is an integral part of the game. And they want to use this as an excuse to combat any argument to say that like you don't need him in order to play the storyline. They want to sugarcoat it so that people can sort of dance around and say, Hey, and it's, I'm it's free. And I'm pretty much guessing the only way they would, it, they would uh, make it in download content is if this game tanks... That's the only thing they're going to try to use to redeem it. You're right. In fact, a lot of people love Virgil, myself included, and I'm still going to play as him, but I'm not going to pay for it. Like, I love him in Ultimate Marvel 3. I love him in DMC 3. You guys have seen my vids. My problem with this is that they want to use it as a selling point and as a way to try and pacify angry people by saying, Oh, it's free if you pre-order. Well, guess what, jackass? It's going to be free after you wait 30 days. Why don't you just get the damn thing now? Right? I bought something, I should be able to use it. Technically, you can say that you purchased the code, right, X-Squad? Yes, I purchased the code, and I have to wait in virtually half or maybe an entire month, depending on, because they didn't write a date, for the entire Friday. I'm not even going to say it, it's too frustrating. No, and you know what? Before anyone calls me biased against reboots, I played the Amazing Spider-Man game, and again, I had trouble finding costumes. It turns out they were originally supposed to be released at later days of the year to celebrate Spider-Man's 50th anniversary, alright? I pre-ordered the game from GameStop or Amazon. I got it from... I'm Amazon. Not, I'm, mine was Amazon. Yeah, yours was GameStop. You got the yeah. Rhino Challenge, and I got the uh, Black Rammy suit. What, whatever. Uh, the point is... Those are just little things, though, compared to this, because now you're talking about a character with six levels included that are built especially for him. You're talking about powers, weapons, a move list, multiple menus. You're talking about components of a game that you want people to get hyped for, only to realize that you're withdrawing them, be it at the last minute or the first. <sighs> now let's read on to the article, because we have one more piece of discussion that I'm really disappointed in. Okay. We were at Capcom went to Ninja Theory not because it couldn't make a Devil May Cry game itself, but because it looked at the developer's body of work, probably paying particular attention to the excellent end slate, which I will say, it is very it is very fun, very beautiful. The combat is two steps down from Heavenly Sword. And Heavenly Sword is uh, Heavenly Sword is alright. DMC though, its combat is slightly better, but Ninja Theory's games, they're not revolutionary. They don't change things forever, alright? But let's continue. Odyssey to the West. It's better, like, they they probably were paying particular attention to the excellent Enslave, Odyssey to the West, and decided it wanted that kind of creative force to reinvent Dante's universe. Which is actually not true, not entirely true. They saw Heavenly Sword, and they were appealed by it. With, with Enslaved, I believe they were just about done working on it when Capcom contacted them. I mean, they spent a whole year changing the character design, and then they spent another year trying to get the moves list in, and guess what happened at every trailer? Uh, this is the following. Uh, a work, a game is still in development. Uh, something like that. I'm basically paraphrasing it. I'm not quoting, but it has been attached to every single trailer. All right, I've, I'm a fan of series. I can deal with reboots. Hell, I'm interested in the Tomb Raider one. I used to play the PS1 original counterpart back in 99. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man movie reboot that had a game tie-in. Loved it. Yeah, it actually made you want to watch the movie. And it was actually well constructed. And even though I have my gripe about the story points being spoiled, you know, that, as a game that is a sequel that takes place after the movie. Anyway, Dante's universe was starting to wear thin, according to this turd. It didn't start in a strong place. The gameplay was strong, and Capcom turned the hedge hodgepodge into a solid action game in the same way developers and publishers have salvaged projects since the industry's earliest days. It started making shit up on the fly and riding up afterwards. Devil May Cry was a great game and so were its sequels, but the franchise friction and canon is not among the great works our industry has produced. It's all style and no substance. Wrong again, Bob. No, wrong again, Haas. I'll tell you Haas. Sank Yuger from the Young Turks loves to say that name, Bob. This guy has probably never played Double May Cry 3, or at least never watched its cutscenes. The scripture was amazing then. In fact, all the Double May Crys have had tie-ins with some decent storytelling. The only one I have a problem with is the novel uh, manga entry to 4, the comic book. 
uh, everything else though, it has some decent scripture. It's not horrible. It's definitely worth paying your dollar for. Hell, I've mentioned it in my previous Let's Plays of Devil May Cry 1 and so on. Uh, Dante was written to have substance. He was designed with style to take advantage of the then new PlayStation 2's graphical capabilities. This was a video game franchise designed to sell a lot of units as quickly as possible on the expensive new platform, not to push the boundaries of the art form. Wrong again, Haas. That's not necessarily a bad thing. The question of what criteria, criteria, mechanics, or intellectual property are important when assessing a game is yet to be settled. But it is a thing, and it means that there's nothing sacred about Devil May Cry's fiction that prevents Capcom from begging Ninja Theory to try and put it together, a fictional universe that it can continue to make games until people grow tired of its rock-solid action stylings. Without writing itself into realms it can't solve by having a woman smash through a window on a motorcycle and flash her tits. Okay, let me see the, the author of this little piece. His name, oh, her name is Brenna Hylier. I'm gonna ask you, Brenna, have you seen the dialogue of this entire game? I have. I've watched the entire set of leaks. It's juvenile, it's inadequate for a story. In fact, I've been told and I've read into the facts that Alex Garland is overseeing Tamim Antoninus' writing, and yet it feels exactly like Tamim 100%. Enslave has a history of being written by the guy, but Alex Garland making changes. Originally, Tamim wanted his character, Monkey, to be Dante the asshole that you see. Yeah. Can you imagine Monkey taking up that attitude and being a likable character at the same time? I don't think a lot of people would. Alex Garland changed that. Tamim didn't want it, but it made for a better game and a better narrative. I love Enslaved as a story. I think the combat is dumbed down. I think it's horrible, to tell you the truth. I could deal with it. Heavenly Swords combat, I like the idea of stances. But to shoehorn all of it in this particular game and change its setting, to change everything and to expect people to take it at face value, it's wrong. It's unreasonable. Virtue is this. Bill May Cry made a standard at the very beginning to be action-packed, to have multiple gameplay and moves. You'd have... And to make it that you want to play the game over and over and over again. But this game... I barely feel like playing it one way, just once through, that's it. I only feel like playing it just once through is just see the whole story and that's it. I don't really feel like playing it again. I don't hate this game as though I harbor a deep grudge to it. In fact, I'm just going to call myself a saint for giving you and me this much patience to actually play it. Again, I'm doing this for free and I'm not getting paid. Everyone else though who writes these articles to denigrate you, to attack you, they're making money off of it, especially when you can hear their quotes on YouTube. They upload these videos, they're partnered. They receive income based off of this and your clicks. I'm gonna do this because I want to help the community. That's it, and I've got some time on my hands, so why not make good use of it? Okay, let's continue. The existence of DMC Devil May Cry doesn't stop the earlier games existing. It doesn't betray or compromise that existing incoherent vision you love so much. If Microsoft threw up in a puddle and sold it under the name Halo 5, it wouldn't stop Halo and its sequels being what they are. If the brand is diluted, that's not your problem. That's the publisher's problem. In fact, I can say the very same thing for all these reviewers desperately standing up for the game and wanting to question you as an individual otherwise. I can say the exact same thing. If these reviewers like IGN and, uh, you know, they've already been mentioned and so forth. If they ha are this upset over a game not getting positive reviews from the actual people paying for it, that's not their problem. That's the publisher's problem. I wouldn't even call it a Ninja Theory problem. I'd call it straight to Capcom because this is their proposal. This was what they wanted to do, and not a lot of people seem to understand this. It's not your problem. That the publisher's problem when the money starts to trickle away. There was no true Devil May Cry game which was shelved for DMC. DMC's existence, should you choose to ignore it, has no effect on you whatsoever. Wrong again! You get criticized the shit out of and you get mocked and your complaints get relegated to a single fragment of hair. To a single string of white. Right? I have legitimate complaints and you've all heard them in the demo. And if you think that I'm being a whiny brat, that you don't like my content, let's see you put up a video. Let's see you make superior arguments. Alright? In fact, I wouldn't bother me. I'd be happy to. I just wish more people would talk about it instead of leaving it in the comments section. It's not about pishing, it's not about trying to push people to come to your website by producing shock value, which this game heavily 
aspires to. It reduces itself to just get your attention by something you thought would be impossible. Last set of paragraphs here, about two or three. And yet, despite the complete absence of logic behind this ill will, it wrongs so strongly that some of you have gone as far as to send death threats to Ninja Theory staff and to accuse VG247 and its peers of corruption, a charge which stinks of conspiracy theory paranoia and to write thousands of words against Dante's hair color rather than react like a normal human being to a game that absolutely has no impact on your life and happiness in a meaningful way. Devil May Cry is a video game. You are throwing a hissy fit because a character in a spin-off video game has a different backstory and hair color to the one you're used to. No, they are not. They are upset because of the bad public relations, to the way Capcom has treated them, to the fact that Capcom has an outstanding reputation for attacking the customer. Have you not been paying attention to Ashura's Wrath, Mega Man Legends 3, Resident Evil 6, the fiasco with Street Fighter Cross Tekken's DLC, the fiasco with any game as of late? DMC Devil May Cry is just one more unjustification and attack on the guy who is paying $60 or less. Hell, or even more, for your special edition. I'm lucky I didn't buy that thing. Lost, last paragraph. You've lost it, gamers. Oh, quote unquote, gamers. I'm ashamed to be sharing an arbitrary demographic grouping with such raving imbeciles. Go outside, get some fresh air, volunteer at a soup kitchen, grow the fuck up, and try DMC Devil May Cry, because it's a good video game. Remember how you used to like those? And guess what? I, I am. I don't like it, I'm pushing myself too, because I have this thing of being flexible. When I disagree with a conservative about Fox News, let's say, I at least watch it. I don't immediately dismiss them because of one or two words I hear that I don't like, like, you liberal, you socialist. No! I, ha I have a lot of patience and a lot of flexibility to keep an eye on something I disagree with. I won't like it, I won't subjugate myself to it, but I'll, I will at least hear them out because everyone has a voice no matter who you are. Yo, and to also make an another comparison, how would you describe me? You actually know me from, and just to make a phrase for that last paragraph, I, I'm not a hardcore gamer, I don't have to know the entire story or 